In this video, we're going to do a deep dive into a potential 100x altcoin gem in the NFT DeFi space. Now, you may be aware at this point in the bull market, NFTs are starting to cool off. And I think these are the great, the best times to be researching into these projects when they're not being hyped up in the bull market, in the crypto space, people aren't looking at them so much. So that's why I'm looking at Poker City today. I've had to find out things about the team and talk to the marketing people. And in the process, I have secured a sponsorship for the channel. So letting you know that straight up, this is sponsored. However, I do have some critical things to say about the team and the project. So stick around for that in this video. If you find some value from the video, hit the like button down below. It takes a lot of time to get a lot of this research underway. So I'd really appreciate it if you could hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you wanna be updated with more cryptocurrency content and hit the bell notification icon so you can be updated with the time sensitive stuff that we cover in the news and the charts. All right, so I've got a few things to cover off here with Poker City. There's a lot more to go through than this. So I'm gonna recap what the project is, uh, a bit about the team, the audits that they have, tokenomics, and pros, cons, news, and my final thoughts. So stick around for all of that. Let's have a look at what this is first. Quite simply, you can purchase assets in their world, in this Poker City, and earn interest on these assets. And I'll get to that in just a bit, but essentially that's the whole idea here. You're basically in some sort of Sims environment, buy the assets, and people are supposed to use these things to earn some interest. So from that point, let's have a look at Twitter and their website. Their Twitter is not too bad, five and a half thousand. It's not huge, but this project is very, very small, which we'll see in just a sec as well. Um, so they do, they are active on Twitter. They're always posting about different things that pop up. That's a good thing. It's a good sign at least that there's activity in the space. Now onto CoinGecko, their market cap is extremely low. And that's why I've talked about this being a potential 100x. It is just short of 6 million. So in this video, I'm going to call it a $6 million market cap. Now for some sort of NFT project like this, being that they are the, uh, the, the world's first 3D and AR NFT platform, I think it has the potential to do 100x. You've got a $600 million market cap. We've seen these NFT projects go a lot more than hundreds of millions of dollars. We've seen them get into the billions. And so even looking at some sort of conservative figure of say a 20x or a 30x, which sounds ridiculous, you'd only have to do 20 times six, not that much. You know, we're looking at about $120 million and that seems very low as well. So the potential for the 100x is getting to that 600 level. I think that has the potential, however, I've got some critical things to talk about just in a little bit in this video. Now, looking at their website, it's all pretty clean here. It looks pretty good. A few things I would clean up, you know, it just seems a little bit off in some areas, but overall it has the, the bare minimum that we want to see. We want to understand a little bit to do with the roadmap. We want to see some of the tokenomics and of course the team, which you can click through and find all of their details here on LinkedIn. So that's the, the major team players. Carmelo, 12 years experience in Microsoft. So there's some background there as well. That's a good thing. They have a Telegram channel, nearly 5,000 members here, 400 online. So it's quite active. On the website, we can see the exchanges there. They're on Gate.io, Biloxi and Uniswap. They have announcements coming up for two big centralized exchanges. So that's going to come up in May. So there's some more news announcements to come. And I think that will also boost the price from where it is currently. Technology, Polkadot, Ethereum, NFT, strategic partners. These guys are out. So that's a little bit of a critical thing. They have funded the project to get it off the ground and have sold. And now the project doesn't require their services anymore. So I've talked to them and they said they're going to take this off the website. But I think that's a, it shouldn't be on there right now. But at least that's one thing that they said they'll do. And they've been very responsive of when I'm talking to the team about some improvements um, that could give to the public if you are looking to do your own research. Uh, the roadmap looking all right, quarter one, got through most of these, quarter two is what we're in now, NFT special edition, high volume centralized exchanges, which I've talked about. So these are coming in May. Poker City Marketplace, Safe Pal Dapp, and then Binance Smart Chain Integration. So that's another really big ticket for the project. As for the tokenomics, there's only 8.7 million in circulation, even though there's a total supply of 250 million. It says here 50 million POLC will be released from the beginning. And I've asked them about that. That's basically putting it onto the platform so that you have to go to the exchange, buy the POLC so that you can then purchase in game to buy your asset. 
So these aren't just floating around for other people to purchase on exchanges, they're in the game so you can swap them over when you actually purchase your asset. And then there's going to be a release of 25 million every three months. So there is still more coming out, but I suspect we'll see some small pump and dumps, especially for a $6 million market cap. You really got to understand that. Now, I'm not saying the team is dumping. I'm saying this is from speculators like yourself who's watching this and myself. If you see your price increase 200, 300, 500%, whatever it is, I assume some people are probably going to sell on those. And because the market is so small, which is a great thing, this is what you need to get the 100 X's, then you just have to expect extreme high volatility. If you want something that doesn't have volatility, then of course you've got Bitcoin. But for small stuff that you want 100 X's in, this is what you have to expect. Now, I've also got the audit here. They, they've got an initial audit from Solidity Finance, and they've got a new audit coming up from Certic, which is um, pretty credible in the industry. Coming 6th of May, it's all been paid for. Token contract, 2D NFT contract, 3D NFT contract, and NFT marketplace contract, all of these will be audited. So that is coming up. Um, let's have a look at the Solidity Finance contract. So you can find this on their website. You just come over to Poker City and then drop this down over here and there's the audit report. So that's what I've got open here. It's Solidity Finance, goes through the details. So this was all done prior to the drop. This was to get the first bits off the ground. Further features are still in development thus far and the team only has an ERC20 token. So all of this checks out that we're looking at in terms of tokenomics. So that's a good thing, especially for these small projects when it's really difficult to find any information to have this audited. They've had to pay you know, good money to get these things done. Um, so I think that deserves some sort of legitimacy to the project as well. Now, what is Solidity Finance? They've also got their website here, which you can look through. So this isn't just like someone auditing someone else and no one knows who they are. Okay, on to the Poker City assets. Now I'll show you those and then go through the numbers in just a sec. So these are the assets on the site. They have sold out of some of the assets and then for some of the others, they have burned them. So if they weren't bought by a certain period of time. The rest of them got burnt, which means those tokens are now gone forever, reducing the supply. Uh, taxis, limos, petrol stations, electric car stations, hotels, restaurants, shopping centers, disco. So essentially they're trying to build out a world here. And one of the other critical aspects I had of this is how are they going to get people into the world? I think initially a lot of these projects seem really good because you're like, sweet, I can go and earn interest by holding a hot dog stand, which costs me 25, 30 grand and they get 200% per annum. But who is coming into this world to want to use the hot dog stand? And I think they have that in part of their plan. This is still extremely early days. It's April. This was released in February. So basically two months in, uh, I'll, I'll give them a chance on this as well. Now let's look at the numbers for uh, a compact taxi. So 2,400 POLC, 130% APY, basically 60 POLC per week. And then you also get an extra 0.0001% per Poker City citizen that you pick up and, and transport around the place. So this is the cheapest asset that you can get into now. Looking at the numbers, POLC is 70 cents. So just go back to CoinGecko, just to double confirm that. Yep, 70 cents. Then we go uh, taxis, I'm rounding it up, 2400. Cost is approximately 1700 US dollars. Interest earning 130%, 60 PLC per week. That is $42 per week, so 2200 per year. That's providing the token price stays as is at 70 cents. I happen to think that we're going to increase from this point. We need to find a base. The base is looking like it's okay at the moment, and we're going to look at that in the charts uh, towards the end of the video. Basically, that's your 130%. Number's done. I just wanted to mention here, a car wash is about 45000 US dollars. So there's another critical point of the project. It's very early days, so got to take that into consideration. But I, I can't see many people wanting to invest 45000 US uh, into a car wash on an NFT platform, which basically hasn't got any proof that it's going to stick around for years to come. But it is early days and that's the risk to reward. It's just like buying 45 grand's worth of a particular token uh, and then you're earning your yield or your interest on that token or you're staking it. It's basically the same thing, except in this case, they've gam gamified it. Now onto the revenue for the company. How are they generating revenue? And speaking with them, they're going to generate revenue from 3D and AR NFT sales, NFT marketplace fees, and upcoming NFT-based professional games. So that's coming up in quarter four. I haven't seen any renders for this game. They're looking to release this probably next quarter. 
and that's for the renders not the game so at least you can see what's going on it might come earlier but at least they've got here on their uh, roadmap that they'll get something uh, in the nft based professional game in quarter four so that's going to produce some revenue for the project us 1.4 million in nft sales done in one month so that's what they've got so far and then of course like i just said this is to come as well in the news they had the first 3D and AR NFT platform. It's already released. So that's what we're looking at when we're playing with the uh, assets that people can buy to get uh, interest APY on those per annum, paid out weekly by what it says on the website. Number two, release NFT marketplace in early May. So if this doesn't come in the first week of May, I suspect probably around the second. You can sell your NFT. So I'm saying that because the audit, this is to come on the 6th. If that gets delayed from Certic, not from their end, it's already been paid for, then that's going to take a little more time to see the release of the marketplace come out. Uh, that's what it says just here. Community voted to wait for an audit before selling in-game items. So at the moment, if you purchase those NFTs, the taxi, you can't sell it to get it out. That's my understanding of what I, you know, what I could find out about the, the company and how their NFTs work. So you can sell your NFT here. So we're waiting for that audit to come through and that's what the community's asked for. They want the audit to be there so everything looks legitimate and then when they start selling, it's all gonna be audited on the blockchain and you can see that moving forward to just give more legitimacy to the project. Number three, integrated on Binance Smart Chain and list on PancakeSwap and also they've got the two reputable centralized exchanges coming in mid-May. So that's gonna reduce the fees again. However, if you wanna transfer off the exchange, NFT game, Polkadot integration, quarter three or quarter four. Call it quarter four because you know these things take time, but that's a pretty good thing as well that we've got Polkadot integration because I just see that narrative getting bigger and bigger as we roll on with the, the cryptocurrency bull market. Now, a little bit of news that they've got here, Poker City, Virtual City, where everything is possible. Got a couple of things highlighted, as we've talked about, listed on several exchanges, most recently Gate.io. Uh, we know they're on Uniswap, Coinbase, CoinGecko, Bilaxi, Blockfolio, Delta App, CoinStats, and SafePal. I wasn't aware they're on Coinbase, but this is what the news says. We're on Cointelegraph, so if they're not, let's blame Cointelegraph. Looking further ahead about Poker City, Poker City is the first of its kind NFT, DeFi, and contract based project with overwhelming support from the virtual reality community. But anyway, I'm just looking at it in terms of the first of its kind. I'm bringing that up again because I feel like they're weighing really heavily on the first of a kind uh, narrative for the project. Now, Camelo Million is a, a blockchain powered and virtual city expert, leads the team. Million boasts uh, of more than 30 years experience working in different fintech brands. Other members of the team also have experience all tailored towards incentivizing the crypto ec ecosystem for everyone's benefit. Uh, that's also part of the article here, Coin Telegraph. Now, the last thing to look at is the chart. I've got my fib on here. I have my downwards trending diagonals. Essentially, I want to see if the momentum has been broken. We're seeing volume dry up and that could mean one of two things. First is not many sellers are left and we're basing out at a pretty good level being that it was previous resistance. It may, I'm not saying it is, but it may become support. This is a level that I like the look of. I'm happy to buy some POLC here just as a small piece, a small speculative gamble after doing the research on the project. Being that it's a $6 million project, I think it does have some potential to at least at least move up a little bit from here. However, I am aware of the downside risks. We have another support level further down. That's 50% away. So that's the game when you're playing with these very small cryptocurrencies. And then further down, it could be a loss of 60 to 70%. However, upsides, I'm looking at previous support being a resistance. That's about 100%. Next lot around the 50% level. So 160. Top here, 200. And of course, if we get going to the old top, then I'm looking at around 400%, but I think this could go a lot further and this is just the beginning. Obviously, we break down through these levels, things aren't looking good, but volume is drying up. I'm willing to take this gamble this early on, $6 million market cap for a small, very small cap NFT play, especially if they can get a few things right, which we're gonna have a look at right now. So the pros, cons, final thoughts. Pros, good narrative in the NFT, DeFi and Polkadot space. Website is clean, we've seen that. Could be more professional looking. I think that could do a bit better, especially with someone working in Microsoft. 
maybe that wasn't their area of expertise in the company, but I think they can clean that up as they go. They're, they're still early on. Telegram is active plus Telegram AMA is done. So that's building the trust. So ask me anything with the founders are in Telegram. They're doing them, uh, I believe, about once a fortnight. So once every 15 days, twice a month, something like that. Audited, very promising. Earn great yields from holding in-game assets. As we saw, some of them were about the 130 to 200% level and then others were upwards of 400. And of course, if the token price increases from here, then that's going to dramatically increase these returns. Uh, so that's what it is at this time of video. Uh, talking, uh, you can talk directly with the founders and the team in those AMAs when you're asking them questions. Binance Smart Chain, Chain planned for this quarter. Game is planned for quarter four. They've already got $1.4 million in NFT sales done in one month. Referral program coming in quarter three, 100x potential. So this is what I've got here, uh, looking at it from the beginning of the video. 6 million to 600 million, doesn't seem crazy. I'm not going to bank everything on this. It's a small play. That's the way I'm looking at this. 50x, 300 million seems manageable if they can get the marketing right. So there's that brings us over to some of the cons and then my final thoughts. Leaning heavily on the world's first narrative. You know, if you've got a competitor that can come along and take that out, it's gonna be a tough one. Could be more uh, influential on Twitter, so I wanna see them on Twitter a bit more, probably the founders as well, talking a little bit over there, but the flip side to that is that maybe they don't have the time and they're actually building a project. Founders don't have a presence, that's over on um, Twitter. However, they're not anonymous, so that's a good sign. They've done videos, they're not anonymous, I, I like that a lot. Need more focus on marketing, and more quality, so more quality marketing. Hopefully they count this as some quality marketing, but this is the cons. They need to really get out there and start to pump this thing. Um, I mean, look, at the end of the day, you're here because you're wanting to see if this is a good project long-term or if you're gonna get some sort of return out of it now. That's what I think is is, is required from the, the company. Competitors could quickly take over the space if Poker City are not fast enough in their development. So this is the difficulty with a small project. They've got to balance the development, but also get the marketing out there to, to capture market share. The Discord needs more improvements, so some management improvements. And I've been told they've hired a marketing team or a team that actually looks after the socials. So that is going to be a good a really good start for them to clean up the, the Discord and then have things flowing a lot better. So I can see a lot of these cons being turned into pros. And in terms of the ones that I'm most concerned about is obviously getting the marketing done as soon, sooner rather than later, and then the competitors in the space, because obviously the NFT is huge and some of these companies can't come. But I'm not overly concerned at this point in time because we'll keep a watch on it. If you if you have an investment, you definitely have to keep a watch on these things. Now to my final thoughts. The company needs to find a way to attract users to the platform. As I mentioned earlier on, uh, why would someone want to use a taxi in the game? I can buy a taxi, I can earn interest from it, but long-term, why would someone want to come into this game and use a taxi? Uh, I've got to watch out for competitors, as we just said, quickly approaching into the space because I think it's a fun thing to have some sort of game and you can earn from it and they've gamified the crypto space. Be careful of pumps and not buying the highs because it's illiquid. Definitely, you know, if you're looking at this and you're watching this later than, you know, the first couple of hours or whatever it's been put up, first few days, definitely go and check a chart. Definitely do that. Coin, Gecko, or use TradingView. And uh, the price is low. So I th think, I'm looking at it here, it looks like it might be bottoming out around that $6 million level. Could go to 3 million market cap. It could go lower, right? But at some point, Got to jump in if you're interested. Supply is currently very low. So it was 8 million uh, circulating supply for the POLC. And we can see on the uh, announcements or on the website about their tokenomics when these tokens are going to be released as well. So that's public. I'm not worried about any FUD of people coming out saying there's 200 million locked up here, there or everywhere. And uh, that is not an issue because it's all public anyway. So I think that's, that's a good thing. Lastly, uh, good potential to pump easily on some good news announcements like the centralized exchanges, which should be coming out next month. So you can't mention who they are, but it will come out in the next couple of months because the exchanges like to talk about that themselves. That's my wrap up of Poker City. I think the project has some potential early on, as you can see from my final th thoughts. Uh, in terms of long term, this is cryptocurrency. I don't even think stuff in the top 10 or even top 20 
will have potential long term. You can see that from the last 10, 11 years of crypto, a lot of that stuff has just rotated out. So to to say something that is ranked 1000 and whatever, to say it could be here for another 10 years, you, you're shooting yourself in the foot. It's nonsense. No one can say that. Um, you can't even say that about Bitcoin, to be honest. So overall, though, finishing on a positive note, I like the project. Go back and have a look at the video if you want to understand it a little more. Let me know the in your comments in the comment section down below if you want to know something further. I'll see if I can get the team across. Otherwise, I'll leave the Telegram link in the description. You guys can click across and ask them questions over there. It's going to be your best place to understand more about uh, this project, Poker City. I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, let me know. Hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel if you want to be updated with more projects, more deep dives into the fundamental analysis and, of course, technicals on the channel with our cryptocurrency portfolios and investing. That wraps me up for today's video. Thank you once again. I'll see you guys at the next video. Until then, have more fun to get more done.